So now that we've looked at the uh, different business continuity and disaster recovery processes, it's time to now incorporate them into a plan of action. These plans are going to guide the recovery efforts to make sure that we are effective as possible in returning business operations back to normal. So the BCP, or Business Continuity Plan, is simply a policy that describes the organization's overall uh, business continuity strategy. So it's going to do a number of things. It's going to involve the identification of critical systems and components. We want to make sure that all of our assets are protected. It should also uh, preserve key documentation and ensure the survival of the organization by doing so. Uh, it should establish who has the authority to make decisions, um, facilitate communication among the different state stakeholders. It should be used to maintain financial functions and other things. We should also address infrastructure issues, uh, implementation of high availability and fault tolerance makes us more resistant to disasters. It's a frontline defense, if you will, uh, for business continuity. And then creating and maintaining backups, aka disaster recovery, is sort of a second level of defense. The business continuity plan and all of its elements should be reviewed and tested regularly uh, so that we can validate those processes and procedures and identify uh, anywhere where changes may be necessary. They should also be signed by an executive in order to be considered authoritative. This is a, a look at a sample business continuity plan, identifies decision-making authority initially, identifies communications, uh, steps and guidelines to recovering business functions, and then uh, some, some plans for review and testing. Disaster recovery plans are a policy that describe and ratify the organization's disaster recovery strategy. Um, this helps organizations to recover from an incident with minimal loss of time and money. High availability and fault tolerance is, is more about keeping the system up and running. In the case of a disaster, disaster recovery is about getting it back up and running once it's failed. So we want to do that with as efficiently as possible. The focus with disaster recovery is restoring IT operations to a working capacity. We're also focused on ensuring the safety of personnel. Uh, DRPs can include a list and contact information for the recovery team, inventory of hardware and software that's going to be required to bring the system back up to operational status, a record of important business and customer information, procedure manuals, and other critical pieces of info, specifications for alternate sites and how to activate those, as well as information on backup items and procedures. Here's an example document, a disaster recovery plan quick reference. Notice uh, starts with immediate disaster response. Uh, protecting people and resources, trying to minimize the damage, then identifies the disaster recovery team, those responsible individuals, uh, the initial recovery steps and resource inventory, and then a plan for the maintenance of this disaster recovery plan itself. Another plan that's a component of the BCP is an IT contingency plan. It specifies alter alternate uh, IT procedures to switch to in case of a disaster. Uh, sometimes we're faced with an attack or disruption of service that, uh, you know, means that we have to have, have a contingency plan. <laughs> Some possible interim measures, operating out of an alternate site, using alternate equipment or systems, relocating the, uh, the main systems. Uh, the effectiveness of this contingency plan is going to depend on three main things. Key personnel understanding when and how the plan should be implemented the review of that plan to see if various aspects are in place. This needs to be done from time to time, including checking on alternate sites, and then training of employees and management so that they can exercise the plan in an efficient way. Succession plans are another part of the BCP. This is a plan that ensures key personnel have one or more backups who can perform critical functions if needed. So it identifies key individuals that are used as replacements, the people that they replace, the functions they can perform, and how they might need to be trained in order to perform those functions. This deals with personnel loss primarily. Failover is a technique that helps to ensure redundant assets can quickly and efficiently uh, take over for failed assets. It's using load balancing and failover clustering uh, to implement redundancy. So one example is load balancers. Uh, they often provide not only performance benefits, but they also provide failover. If one of the servers is down or taking too long to respond, the load balancer would then redirect traffic to other healthy servers. 
redundant servers in the pool ensure that there's no service interruption. Um, and so load balancing usually is for front end type of applications like web servers. Failover clustering is the same kind of concept, but it's for back end servers. It's important to include this kind of aspect into the BCP to minimize impact and scope of disasters. So we want to take an inventory of the primary assets, redundant assets. We need to map the primary assets to the redundant assets. That's going to streamline the recovery process. Ideally, we're identifying the most critical functions in our business and the components that are involved with uh, maintaining that function, and we need to then ensure high availability for them. Uh, alternate business practices are, you know, components that may be necessary if some of the major elements of the business change, like moving customer service operations from the main facility to an alternate processing site, one that's in a different geographic location. Okay, so in that case, the new facility may be understaffed or less well-equipped. Organization may relax quotas at that time and expectation in response to those change conditions. They may offload some services to a third party which would require new business arrangements. So business processes need to be flexible and able to adapt, but there should be plans and procedures in place for this. And it's important that every business continuity plan and disaster recovery plan be tested periodically. This should be a built-in part of the implementation so that we can evaluate the effectiveness of the, uh, the plans and so we can identify necessary changes to those procedures. This includes a number of different types of exercises like walkthroughs, workshops, and orientation seminars, which provide basic awareness and training for recovery personnel. They also help to describe the contents of the plans as well as roles and responsibilities uh, within those plans. Tabletop exercises are within the recovery team where those members are discussing their role in emergencies and their responses in certain sample situations or actual situations from the past. Functional exercises are more action-based sessions where personnel are going to validate plans and they actively respond to simulated scenarios. And then full-scale exercises are those that reflect real situations. These are held on site, they use real personnel, and they're often conducted by public agencies. The Action Action Report or Lesson Learned Report in is going to provide insight on improving response processes in the future. So based on uh, actual events or these test cases, we can report on exactly what happened and how we responded. This helps to identify if the organization actually followed the business continuity plan and if it was adequate. We can use this to learn from successes and failures. Uh, that leads to enhanced processes and refined plans. And you can ask yourself a number of questions. What happened? What did the organization do in response to what happened? Uh, was the continuity plan followed? Uh, and the various subordinate plans, what elements were failed to implement, uh, to be implemented? Were these elements relevant to the situation or did the scenario not warrant them? You know, did the BCP address the particular situation? Are there gaps that need to be addressed? Did the recovery team do the right thing? Are there additional steps that need to be taken? Does the BCP need changed? You know, all of those kinds of things are useful as a part of that after action report. So the business continuity plan is very important to your system. It needs to be as comprehensive as possible. Uh, we also want supplemental disaster recovery plans for restoring IT operations should our business continuity planning and high availability fail us. The DRP should include backup procedures as well as other uh, critical information. And ultimately, we need to have a contingency plan, too, just to make sure we can continue IT procedures in the case of extreme disasters. IT personnel and recovery teams need to be trained on that plan. We need to have a succession plan for replacing key personnel and the ultimate of disasters, the loss of life. Uh, incorporate failover techniques into the BCP and adequately identify the assets that are going to be involved there. Always do testing, always perform documentation, and ask questions about the potential modification of these business continuity plans. So in this chapter, we looked at ensuring that we can maintain business continuity in the case of a disaster. So regardless of the security controls that we put in place, we can still interact with or encounter some worst case scenarios. And so we saw the different elements of the business continuity plan and how it's crucial for any organization uh, so that they can get their systems back up and running as quickly as possible.
So this concludes the video course uh, to prepare you for the Security Plus certification exam by CompTIA. Uh, in this course, we started out with some of the basics, understanding security fundamentals, like the goals of security, confidentiality, integrity, uh, and availability, and other things like cryptography and digital signatures and identity management, etc. We then looked at the importance of analyzing risk and understanding three really uh, primary concepts of the vulnerability, the threat that's associated with the vulnerability, and then the calculated risk. And we uh, showed how every organization has to plan for this to identify where we should spend our money in uh, an effort to secure our, uh, our assets. We looked at conducting security assessments and identifying what security is currently in place and whether it's adequate or needs to change. And then we spent several chapters looking at the implementation, implementation of operating system security through general hardening, through patch management, through anti-malware. Software security was similar uh, in its form. Network security, we could use things like VPNs, encryption, security devices like proxy servers, firewalls, uh, et cetera, to, to try to, to secure things. For identity and access, we have databases that contain user accounts. We have to secure the sign-in process so that we can authenticate who you are. And then based on that identity, we can control your access to resources. We looked at how you can leverage cryptography and cryptographic methods to keep authentication secure as well as data transfer secure. And we looked at the importance of policies and procedures and how those help us to implement operational uh, security. Finally, we looked at addressing security incidents that might arise and understanding the steps that we need to take to contain the incident and help to ensure that that does not occur in the future. And business continuity is, of course, an important thing because all the security in the world doesn't really matter if the data is not available. So I hope that the information in this course was helpful to you. I certainly hope it helps you to prepare for and pass the certification exam, but I really hope it, it helps you in real life and just get you a, a better understanding of security uh, in the area of information technology. So my name is Patrick Wohner. It's been my pleasure to be your instructor on this course, and we'll see you next time.